Yeah. Yeah. So I want to hear. I I know Prashun walked. He informed me last night. Okay. I just want to hear from the rest of the person because we have around seventy eighty people in the call. Okay. So unless and until you practice it, I am again telling you because project has lot of expectations from you. Okay. So these expectation can only be met if you get your hand dirty into Angular. Problem सबको आता है. Okay. you people are working hard i know but the purpose of this training to make you full stack okay so this is an opportunity for you people to get your hands dirty with the angular stuff if you do not practice right now probably it will be very hard for you in the project also you won't be able to get that kind of confidence Okay, I will be able to deliver the front end tickets as well as my back end tickets. It will be, a, I mean, waste of time for everyone. The training, the person giving the training, the people who are taking the training. Yeah, I have shared this document with uh, many of the people. I mean. Who are there in this mail chain, and I give them, I think, editor access or uh, commenter access, so that you people can get through with those documents. But these documents is okay to start with, but at the same time, what we are actually discussing, you need to stretch yourself. Okay, at 7 p.m. or maybe 7:15, we are closing this call, right? So probably you have to sit with your your system for another two hours to complete that task. That is the I mean prime time to involve into the coding part of Angular. If you think that okay we have done for today we will see again on tomorrow, it will never happen. So Prashun, can you show me what you have done? Yes. Can you see on my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Am I on my screen? Is it? Yes, sir. Is it? So first of all, I just uh, give you the demo over here, and then I just go through the code. It will. So if there is, uh, this is the input binding. When I click here, those values change in the child uh, component as well. So, and output is the vice versa. Means uh, the child uh, value is reflect to the parent. Means if I write here over here anything, then that should be reflect to parent. Like if I write anything here over here. I just restricted it maximum ten. So after ten, it will be can't be written anything. The next line is ten. If you change it, that the base. So the code is we can do this in as suppose as is two way binding or ng model or ng model or you can use output property binding. Yeah, so can I show you code? Yeah. So first. I have to. I need to change in four files: two uh, PS file and uh, two HTML file from uh, in both parent and child. So first, I need to change in the uh, child component PS file. So first, I need to declare an event. As Subhuta says, that we need to consider event emitter for the output. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So the input and then there's the output. We have to remove our ng model stuff, and yeah. now we it will need data this from this child ng model stuff. And I just uh, here over. I just place one uh, event here, and here I just write one method. Get hero uh, called one method. Uh, get hero name, and there is one templating system which I need to add. Like this is. 
we have like a id property remaining html html text so you can give this like a id property so this hero name you can give it any any kind of uh, name so i give it hero name has hero name so you need to as we need to for id we need to mention has and then hero name and then using that id or hero name dot value we are passing that value here so why you need to add this why we can't directly use this value over here so as per my understanding if i use directly this value this is a step this is the default first value when we are clicking over here but if we need to change runtime means if we need to add anything here so this is this will take from the field itself via id so for that we need the templating system like that and then in runtime we can cache those value over this method and then in this method what i write over here uh, just as it is a string here is the event emitter and this is a type which type we should pass with the through this event emitter you can pass string number anything so i pass as it is a string hero as it is a string this one is the string so we need to pass string so i pass string and also over here we need to pass the string type and the name is anything you can give here i just give hero name over here and then you have to pass the value from get hero name which i get from here in runtime in the event emitter right and event emitter i name it uh, hero name event you can give any kind of name so you need to pass over here this dot value of that event variable name of that event and then emit method and then you need to pass the hero name variable over here so you cache this data from your uh, input uh, text field to your event then you need to go to the parent field so parent html if you check in the parent html uh, here you can just uh, call the event name uh, using this first bracket parenthesis within the parenthesis so this is the event name hero name event you check over here hero name event hero name event so you need to add here the hero name of the event hero name event and then then there is one variable this is default variable dollar event we can't change this like dollar cosine or dollar superto like that way so this is the default variable so dollar event variable is catch the value from the event of the child ts like uh, this one so here we catch the value that means whichever which one we uh, write in this text field it is catch in the dollar event via the event emitter method so here we cache this value then we need to pass this value to any method i give the name of the method say hero name you can give any kind of name so say hero name i pass that value then in the uh, ts um, uh, in the component we have to write that set uh, hero name and over there we need to set the value so how can we do say hero name and as we said this is the string value so you can put the hero name over any variable over there i give it hero name and then you just need to uh, select this select hero dot name means select hero we know what the full full element of this but i need to only change the not id we need to only change the name so the selected hero means which one is the selected one like uh, now is your narco select so there is this dot selected hero means narco so this dot selected hero dot name means narco value should be changed with the hero value which i catch from the event editor so if i change over here when the value change the in the uh, name as well name property uh, uh, as well of that uh, field so here one condition i added like if this selected hero why because if i do, do not add this condition then first time when we don't select any kind of value like at the time of pass when the page is uh, load i uh, there is no value is selected so selected hero is not uh, this the selected hero value is undefined so that time it will give error so for that we need to check if the value is defined or not or if the value is any one value is at least one value is selected or not so we need to keep that uh, condition as well 
So like that, you can use uh, output parameter instead of ng model to a to a binding choice. So anyone has any question regarding this? Because just think about the for replacing ng model, how many areas we have to modify and how many extra lines of code we have to write. The ng model is the simplest way to deal with that parent-child communication. So yesterday, I think uh, one lady was asking me about the registration form. So have you ever able to complete the assignment of a registration form? The link I have shared. Uh, are you talking about me? Hi. Yeah, come on. Yeah, actually, I just started uh, creating uh, uh, the application, so I'm uh, still on the variable session. So I think by tomorrow I'll complete that session because I missed the two sessions of yours. No, yes, okay. So anyone from this meeting? Are able to complete that registration form because I am what I am talking about. There are a couple of things. Okay, I I may be gone through a training on specific notes that I have created, but apart from that, there are lots of things that there is the Angular. Whenever any question will be raised, I will probably supply you the respective examples and everything. In those cases, you have to practice it okay you have to practice it then you will be able to understand probably grip the project code with you so that is my expectation actually you people are very senior and expert either in php net java or maybe python okay and you need to spend time and you have to tell me if you are facing any kind of problem so that i can give a suggestion that this will be the more better approach to learn because otherwise output of this training will be almost zero okay okay so let me share my screen So today we will talk about services. Okay. So what are what is services? Suppose you need to give an API call. Okay. And before we start the services, there will be one important topic will be there. That is RxJS. So let me take you to the RxJS.
so rx is is a i mean it's a similar thing like uh you can say like type script itself is a separate library to deal with the asynchronous things okay but it has its own documentation website we have our access library for angular okay so main reason behind this thing i'm sharing this link with you. the main reason behind this thing to understand rxjs we have synchronous and asynchronous calls people who are working with jquery they know that what is what does it mean by synchronous and asynchronous in angular we have two things okay one is observable another is called prompt so what is observable what is prompt observable is a stream of data okay think about your api responding back to a certain request from the front end side it is sending a huge data so there might be two option one is get the data in one shot or another option will be get the data in streams okay like a video streaming So this stream concept comes in observable. By default, observable is very lazy, and promise is very fast. Promise understand two things: one is reject, another is resolve. If you get response, then to resolve, if the re response fails, either from API end or whatever it is by any condition, then it is reject. it's an one shot there is there is no middle uh, approach will be there okay so in that case what happened observable comes in picture and in in our angular application most of the cases we will deal with observable observable comes from rxjs library okay it observable we can handle stream of data okay and there will be an option say for example i send a request to the backend okay maybe backend fails for first time so i want to re retry maybe another two times or maybe three times to check whether i can get the response or not yes so those things can be achieved through the observable and observable has Two three functions. Okay. So main discussion is that when we talk about services, okay. So you can read these things with observable promise and RxJS, okay. Uh, from here, or if you can also search with Google to get some inputs. Now the question is. we there is rxjs is a huge library okay if i open the rxjs library uh it is a very big library and this library can lar, uh, run independently with anyone okay, rxjs dot dev this is an independent site of rxjs where we talk about observable observer subscriptions and subjects and various subjects and everything okay but we are using and we get to know that which rxjs operators we need to use frequently with angular so i think this particular example is there they have given this is ng on any app module okay this is an interval rxjs operator interval rxjs operator this is not very important so what it is required an observable to emit data it required subscription okay so unless and until the i told you at very beginning observables are very lazy so unless and until you subscribe any observable 
you won't get the data so here with numbers they are generating a certain numbers now they are subscribing this number so in this subscription they will get the list of values the list of values it is showing over here okay so that subscription 0 1 2 3 5 6 7 8 so if the data is coming like a stream and you can break down your entire response into a stream if you are using observer. Now take. Take is one of the important operators of the RX space. So I told you that uh, I just keep on printing forever. We just want first three items. So your API is giving you entire data. You need only first three items from the response. You can use this take operator with your RHJs. Subscribe this number and take three. Pipe. Pipe is, what is pipe? Think about a pipe, a water pipe or whatever. It is holding the stream of water. The same thing pipe is holding the stream of observable data. So from there, you need to take only first three. That is the concept of take. There is a map. Very, very important RHS operator for everyone. So you are used to with the for loop, for each loop, something like that. Okay. The difference between for loop or for each loop and the map is that map and for each loop both will be used for iterating certain things. But map will allow you to modify your iteration and get the modified value as an output. So what you have to do, say for example, you are iterating through an array. If you want to do that thing, you write for loop, then you probably contact certain value against each element, and then probably you need to push those data into an another array, and then you get the desired data, right? So map will do same thing in one shot. So map will be used to modify your value into the loop. There is another operator available. I don't know whether it, they have given you here or not. Uh, no. So you can note it down, the tap operator. Okay. So one tap operator I am giving you or anyone can note it down. Okay. The, the common mistake people generally ask and people frequently ask these questions. What is the difference between map and tap? Both will consume certain data, but map allow you to modify certain data and tap doesn't allow you to modify anything. Where we use map? Map can be used anywhere. In our Angular application, map can be used anywhere. Okay. If I am interested, I can modify. If there is no requirement, I should not modify. But tap has a specific, specific case where, say for example, we are collecting data from login form, user input email and password okay so in those case we have to use tap operator so that whatever value we are receiving those value cannot be modified at any stage why we should use tap we can use map also yes we can use that the reason behind using tap is angular comes with a i mean rxjs operator provides an extra security layer over there. so that any hacker because login form, registration form, these are very sensitive areas of the application. When people try to have, if I get the login credential, probably I will be able to access the entire application, right? So hacking possibilities are there. So this tap operator basically capture the modification. If anything modified, then tap will reject, it and tap should not work. So that is the speciality of using tab in that specifically in the login purposes. So these are the basic operators.
okay map take step i think there but at the same time there are other operators also I'm sending this link. Probably right now, this link may be a little bit at harder stage for you. Okay, but going forward, when you will be able to little bit on stable sites, I mean confident in Angular, you will get this link very important. Okay, so if you the thing validator so so concat of of basically transfer into an array into an observable okay concat is simply concat This is an just read this section. Can you please open this link in your own end and dig, go to this link RFCS concat map operator? I'm asking everyone. Yes, I'm there. You are there, right? So there will be a situation in our real life example when we need to have nested API call. And sometimes what happens is that one API call depends upon another API call. So you are getting response from the first API call and then you are sending certain data. Uh, to the next API call. Okay. If in any situation it may happen that your first API delayed some for certain reason to give you the data, since JavaScript is very fast, what will happen? It will try to jump into the next subscription, and in that case, application will throw an error. To overcome that thing, okay. We are using concat map, okay. And then there is an option for switch. Say, for example, you have multiple API calls, okay. And uh, merge map is there. Merge map also merge the responses. So you need to understand the difference between concat map and the merge map. Switch map is similar to the switch case, but what happened that you given multiple API call, but you collect the data. Into a single response. Okay, so I will tell you probably it will be a little bit at a harder stage to understand these things. Okay, first of all you have to understand the RFCS. You can practice it in any Angular application. You can practice it. Okay, and there are uh, 
in this particular site you will get everything okay and inside observable operators space there are lots of operators you will be there this is the merge all switch all i am talking about merge map switch map okay there are also lot of operators are available but one thing is like that when you start using and little bit experience with those things that time you can play with these operators because you can you can actually search for your examples and you will get that so now i am coming back to the main Mr. content yes hello question hello i have a question mm -hmm. yeah so uh, this rxjs is a extension of javascript right not typescript hello rx rjs library yes yes rxjs is an independent library yes okay. so we are using it for asynchronous programming right yes. so where we are basically subscribing to a screen so if we don't subscribe there is no way subscription, like subscription can be done if you are dealing with observable for promise okay. there is no subscription promise one shot request and one shot response if response is there it will resolve otherwise it will resolve go in between path was there so promise is very fast so in your application when you create any service and probably dealing with api okay you have to think about whether i need this observable or i can deal the entire stuff with the prop because promise is definitely faster than observable okay so in that cases you need to put your code judicious okay you uh, whether i need to use promise and whether i need to use observable but in most of the real life examples people generally play with observable because the plus point is you have lot of scope to modify or maybe play with the data okay or in between time i can say the play of i mean data of streams or streams of data so rxjs is an independent library it comes with angular framework by the, uh, and you need to import that so it is there inside your angular cli you have to import rxjs library and then use it in the angular application there is that is not like an external package that you have to use or install okay hi okay. uh, shubhrat so to in case of promise we can't we use async and await functions is it not allowed in angular like See, it does the same thing as promise right async and await basically where we use we use async and await when we think since javascript is very fast okay but it is always better to use promise rather than async and await okay okay but what is the downside of using async and await over promise like if we had to really go by that if you are saying promise is better in that way yeah promise is better in that way because uh, generally you where where we use probably i have a uh, multiple function written into a component okay correct now i am i am calling probably in a ng on init life cycle hook and it might happen that uh, my first function is taking more time and my second function getting executed executed so, so so in that case probably we use async await and then we use our second second function call okay so i mean the benefit of using promise is that when you get resolved when your data gets resolved then only you give a call to the function function second function second function okay so the benefit of using promise is promise async await sometimes async await also fails okay in real life scenario sometimes async await fails it is always we uh, suggest uh, thing by the experts that try to use promise when you have that kind of scenario in your angular 
so what you are saying is basically async await structure is like if there is a there are multiple function calls and let's just say there is one function in the job that is running and it is taking too much time so it has to wait for that function to execute and then it goes to the next function but in case of promise only when it gets the resolve it will take that function up otherwise it will jump is yes. that what you are saying yes, yes. So that is why you are saying promise is way more faster in that. Promise is faster and always it is advisable. Always it is advisable to use more promise rather than async await. People who are working with Node, they have yeah. the worst experience uh, using async await. Probably those developers most frequently use async await functions. Okay, uh, yeah. because Node is very fast. Okay. So they have to use async await function to handle these nested, uh, I mean nested conditions or functions. Nested conditions or or functions. Yes, but it yeah. is always better to use promise. Right. Yeah. Okay. So today we will start with the service. So first of all, we will create. Service for service, I need to tell you that service is an example of a dependency injection. Service is always injectable. I can create one service and I can inject that service into multiple components as and when required. Okay, so service use cases are service can be used with sharing data between two sibling components, or service we can use to get the I mean, our API calls for maybe insert, update, delete, whatever it is. We write our methods in the service. We call API, we get the data. Then we, from the component side, we call that service method to get the data in the TS file or component file. And from there on, we can plot the data into the group. That is the cycle, entire life cycle hook of service. You can see earlier Angular, earlier version, I mean before Angular 7, Angular doesn't provide these injectable properties into the service. Okay. So all the service generally inserted into our root areas. So we need to add services in, inside the provider section of the app module. So whatever happening, that probably in your application we have maybe uh, I can say 15, 20 services. So all services generally loads at initial stages in the provider. But now after Angular 8, Angular gives us an example I and mean then show that we will create a service and we will inject that service from here. So provided in root means it will go inside the root. Okay, root means root doesn't mean that app module root means that specific component that is using this service okay it will be injected to there not in the app module so if we need in the home component as well as in the contact as component the service will be injected in the home component and the contact as component but it will never go into that app module if you go into that app module though it will happen that that particular data in the service will be available all across the application. So automatically increases the bundle size to reduce the bundle size and make Angular more faster. 
service came with this dependency injection and right now it is provided in root root means where it is going to be injected <clears throat> so i have uh, documented this information okay so if you read those things so you can understand those things so now i am going to use my mock data into my service file okay so what i have to do i have to import these two stuffs i have to import my model and i have to import my mock data so right now we do not have any rest api okay so we have to rely on this mock data and this is a function you can see that there is a slight difference in service right service also has a constructor component also has a constructor right but component comes with hooks that where and which condition this particular hook can be utilized in the different life cycle hook of but service doesn't have any hooks it has constructor but it doesn't have any hook so what we have done we have written one function okay it will return hero array you can check here this is a void and it is the what it will return it will return hero type of array okay so that is the speciality of the type script so i have explained everything routine and route what it is here now i am going to import this service into my heroes component.ts file this is giving me an error where is the hero service i have imported hero service but it is not accepting this thing. so i have to include it into the constructor why i am using this constructor now because constructor loads fast okay so whatever import whatever service we need to inject we need to put these stuffs into our constructor first so that it will be available for rest of the life cycle okay now so far i have created this method right but this method is now not even call this entire rendering process is a syntax error i am using hero service that's why i do not have initialization so they are giving me error but i never call this thing get heroes so i have to call this thing so where i will call i will call in the ng on init life cycle here.
now i have my data into my view page okay so this data right now coming now the data we have earlier what happened that we are getting those data from directly from the mob data now we put this entire stuff in a service okay and we are collecting this data in a service same thing just like this function you need to give an api call over here the data you receive over here and then from the component side you have a function which will call that particular function in the service and get data into that ts file now we have this these dot heroes and we can plot this data into our view page so far we do not have any api now i am going to put observable so observable comes in the rxjs so i am not going to import anything from the outside it is already there so i will go into that hero service and put import this observable and i will modify certain things into server so i'm just now see what happened it is started throwing error i have converted it into an observer earlier what happened that it is returning an hero type of array so it is showing started giving an error automatically this is the speciality of the type script apart from type script you don't get anything anywhere so right now it is not matching because heroes that we have declared over here it's an array of arrays okay now we put it as an observable so observable is not matching over there so we have to modify certain things to get the data from the observable we need to subscribe it's done so you have converted into a service you are returning you your data you are returning right now you are returning in in the form of observable that means stream of data this off operator basically converts this is an rxjs operator this off operator basically converts your arrays into an observable okay now you need to subscribe that observable to get the data here so that's why whenever i change this thing from array to observable i have to subscribe otherwise i won't be able to get the data okay so i have explained those things in this particular documentation so far i have to stop today here so you have any question hello uh, subrata so observable is a generic collection observable is a collection of streams collection of streams streams, streams. data data streams no data streams so no one has any question right so we have covered observable we have covered promise we have given example of a service 
will show the dependency injection i have given you couple of links to i mean play with your observables important observables i have mentioned map pipe take take until switch map merge map concatenate map concat map another example is fog join fog join is also very important so you have to remember this five six RHTS operator. These RHTS operators are very important because otherwise, if you don't use this RHTS operator and you try to manipulate the response in your own, you have to write a lot of code over there. And that is completely unnecessary because RHTS provide us those inbuilt function for us uh, to play with those kind of scenarios. You have to understand where we should use these RHCS operators. These six, seven operators we frequently use. Okay. Probably I can say 90% cases will be there with these operators. Rest are, I mean, special cases. Here and there, probably you are searching in Google for a solution and probably you will get that one example where that special operators have used that kind of thing. But in 80 to 90% cases, the RHJS operators I have mentioned and observable and promised, those will be the practical scenario in the project. So I think if you do not have any question, then we can stop today's call. Hello. Yes, Subhat, I don't have any question right now. Okay. Then I'm closing this call. Thank you. Thank you for the joining. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Subhrata. Thank you, Subhrata.